Greetings from Las Vegas. It's week four of the pro football season and man things change quick in this league, doesn't it? Dallas, what happened? Denver, really? All right, let's get this party started. Beat the odds starts right now. From our Las Vegas studios, this is Beat the Odds, sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas. Welcome inside our Las Vegas studio. I'm Dave Hall. And I'm Mariah Janos. Dave, what does the Denver defense and our Fat Jack have in common? Ooh, let me think. Uh, Denver gave up 70 and Jack peaked in 1970? Nailed it. Bingo. Right on the head. Everyone come for the betting knowledge and stay for our <laughs> terrible jokes. We probably specialize in both. Uh, all right. How come Teddy always gets off the hook, by the way? We got to think of jokes for Teddy. Well, let's dive into the show. Coming up over the next 30 minutes, Jack and Teddy will talk about some of the weird lines they're seeing here in week four and how you can take advantage. Plus, the boys are red hot with their best bets. See who they like this week. And I will be joined by a former pro down in Atlanta that gives us his takes on this season. Plus, Brandon Marshall is in studio for a little therapy after <laughs> that disastrous Denver game. I'll be back shortly. Dave, over to you. All right, thanks, Mariah. Back with the boys. I was just kidding, Jack. You know, nothing but love. No, I was going to say, I peaked in the late 80s with the Flock of Seagulls. All right, the <laughs> 70s way too early for me. So a couple decades off. But, yeah, a lot of crazy games going on this last no week. Doubt. Did we just get a flock of seagulls reference on here? <laughs> we did. That's, flock of seagulls and I have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're, we're branching yeah. out with our exactly. comedy. <laughs> All right. Before we dive into week four, guys, uh, week three, again, we saw a lot of surprising upsets, Teddy. Sure. I mean, it was Shocker City. Look, there were four favorites of a touchdown or more last week, and three of them lost in straight up fashion. Jacksonville losing to Houston, Baltimore losing to Indy which was the best bet here, thank you very much, mm -hmm. and Dallas <laughs> losing boy. to Arizona. But we don't always see the chalk go down. Last week was one of those weeks where the big favorites didn't do so well. Yeah, and before that, seven-point favorites or better had been 5-0 and oh and were winning by an average of double digits. So double-digit favorites had been really, really good. That changed. I tell you, I'm not sure that Russell Wilson and Sean Payton need a divorce attorney just yet, but I'm not sure last week helped at all. Seven <laughs> touchdowns on the road. Do you know a good one, Jack? Uh, you know what? I don't. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> my wife is better than I am. So, yeah, but seven touchdowns, uh, giving up that on the road, it was just an absolute debacle for them. That was a shocker for me was Miami losing that big. And now turning around being an underdog to Buffalo so a lot of you know ebb and flow of this league we're, we're seeing on a weekly basis sure sure 10 touchdowns no yeah, field seven, goals. Was, yeah yeah that's yeah, a 10 7 pointers yeah, yeah. Uh, which is one of those scenarios where you're like did they actually show up on defense because you're not forcing one field goal that to me is a team that may have quit on the field which is a concern but you talk about some bizarre stuff from last week the most bizarre ending of all LA Minnesota both teams did their best to lose the game LA going for it from inside their own 30 on fourth down and getting stopped and giving Minnesota a chance which they couldn't take advantage of stressful for whichever way you had that one bizarre ending and of course brutal beat there was one really tough beat last week and if you had New Orleans minus the one dominating the game against Green Bay up 17 nothing into the fourth quarter quarterback gets hurt 18-17 final. New Orleans minus one. Ouch. Mm. That one hurt. And so now we try to figure out how can we take this information, not overreact to it, but take advantage of it. And we have some spots that are going to be uncomfortable to play. But teams like Chicago uh, giving up 35 points a game, they're playing that same Denver team that just gave up 10 touchdowns. So you've got to be able to figure out how to dig in this trash of what's happened early on and then take advantage of that to be able to cash some tickets. For our new sports bettors out there, uh, these first three we weeks have been absolutely chaotic can we expect things to maybe start calming down now I no, know absolutely not no this is a, a league of parody if you if you're trying to handicap with what you saw a week ago that's the easiest way to go broke your handicapping should start with what happened a week ago not end with that so anytime you hear somebody saying well that's what happened last week it's gonna happen this week right. that is an absolute nail in the coffin yeah and look this is a league in which strange things can and do happen you can take advantage, but recognize one week, random things going to happen all the time. Get out in front of the curve. Don't play from behind it. There it is. All right. I know you guys have uh, circled some games you want to talk about. We'll get to that in the next segment. Meanwhile, the biggest story in football betting has been Coach Prime in Colorado. But after getting whooped by Oregon, is the party over? Well, Mariah is at the Superbook Westgate Las Vegas with more. Thanks, Dave. I am here with EVP of Superbook Operations, Mr. Jay Cornegay. Jay, week three, a lot of surprises there, but how did you guys do here at the book? 
Well, we like surprises, <laughs> and that's what we got this last Sunday with Jacksonville going down, Baltimore going down, and of course Dallas losing outright to Arizona. You, you can imagine that those results were very positive for us. Now, going off of that, every week it's the book versus the public, but with those popular teams, how do you guys make money off of those? Well, it's kind of a Jekyll and Hyde situation for us. When they cover, it's usually not positive for us, but when they go down, you know, the books usually do pretty well. So, what teams like uh, Kansas City, Dallas, popular teams, San Francisco, whenever those teams don't cover or lose outright, we do pretty well. And does that apply to the college game as well? Oh yes, especially this year in college football. You got the hype train going on in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, we didn't do too well the first couple of games, but when they failed to cover against Colorado State, they lost outright to uh, Oregon, got blown out by them. Those were really good results for us, but when they cover, those type of popular teams like Colorado or Michigan, Georgia, whenever they cover, those are the teams that, or games that actually hurt us. We got the dogs barking at that one. All right, Jay, thank you so much. Dave, we'll send it back to you in studio. Apparently dogs like to gamble too. Thanks, Mariah. Up next, we're talking about diamonds in the rough. So shouldn't we have Jack and Teddy's wives for this segment? Uh, if anybody would know about polishing a diamond in the rough, it's them, right? Plus, Brandon Marshall is back. He is very sad. The former Denver champ tells us, is, tells us if his old team can fix that defense. Before we head to break, with 70 points last week versus Denver, Miami nearly broke the league record for most points scored in a single regular season game. But which team has the record? The answer after the break. Beat the Odds is sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you which team holds the league record for most points scored in a regular season game. The answer, Washington, all the way back in 1966. They dropped 72 points on the G-Men in what ended up being a 31-point route. Well, perhaps we'll see two and his boys fly here into Vegas to play in the big game at Allegiant Stadium. We've got a long way to go, though. Hey, scan that QR code on your screen. It will whisk you away to our website, BeatTheOddsTV.com. Okay, this feels kind of mean. We love Brandon Marshall. We love his perspective. We love having you here. But we have to start with your old team in Denver. <laughs> 70 points, Brandon. Uh, 70. You know, that's a college basketball score. <laughs> I, I can't believe that they allowed Miami to score 70 on them. It's, it's tough to fathom a team yeah. averaging 15 yards a catch and eight yards per rush on my beloved Denver defense. I, I just... It's, it's a sore subject for me. Well. I know. He, he was fired up before we started going here. Uh, at what point did you turn off the TV and just, like, forget it? I can't watch this anymore. Uh, you know what? You know, my daughter was crying. You know, she was hungry. So I decided to, you know what? Even she had had enough. She had had <laughs> enough. So I just turned it to, to a red zone, and I was like, you know what? It's enough. And it, yeah. as I just kept checking the score, kept checking the score, just uh. it went from 30 to 40 to 50, and I was just like, it was unbelievable. I was embarrassed yeah. as a, a former player, yeah. but as a fan as well. Well, take us into the locker room. Um, what's the worst beatdown you as a <laughs> defensive player took during your career? Okay, well, 2017, we played Philadelphia. Um, that was the year they actually won the big game. Mm -hmm. uh, Carson Wentz was a quarterback, so okay. they put 51 on us. Now, that's a lot. A 50-burger is a lot. Yeah. Okay? I can hang my hat and say it wasn't 70, <laughs> but 50 it was 51 to 23, and we got just annihilated that game. Yeah. What well, is it fixable? I mean, we're only three weeks into the season. Can they fix this and turn it around? Absolutely, they can fix it. It's still early. You know, I mean, I don't think they have big game aspirations anymore, but they can yeah. still fix it and, and try to get better, you know, step after step as a team. Um, you know, how far they can go as a team, you know, I think everybody has thrown them out the conversation yeah. of, of making a big game. Well, luckily, they have Chicago this week, so that yeah. might uh, solve some wounds there. Well, let's go to the opposite end of a defensive spectrum, a team that is really played well so far, Cleveland. Cleveland is fantastic. They are the number one team uh, in the league as far as, you know, yards per game goes on the defense. And they're playing out of this world. You know, they only give up 163 yards a game. And mm -hmm. for a, a team in the league, that is unheard of, to be honest with you. So watching them play, Miles Garrett, uh, is, he's playing basketball on the, oh, on, the, on the field. He's doing everything he wants yeah. to do. Um, they're playing inspiring defensive football. It is, it is great to watch. Real quick, last question about Denver. Do you think they should have called off the dogs, Miami? No, I think they should 
should have read it up. You know, if they could have scored 100, then they should have. All right. Well, there it is. Brandon Marshall, it'll get better, my friend. It'll get better. Thank you. Well, apparently Jack and Teddy's wives were unavailable for this segment. They need a break from those two as well. So here is Jack with his diamonds in the rough. You know, when I was about nine, my mom's third or fourth husband would make me go to the Oklahoma University football games afterwards and pick up cans uh -huh. after the game for money. And I'll tell you, it taught me something that comes in handy this time of year. You can take the trash of what's going on in some of these games and take advantage of them if you can find those diamonds in the rough. And I've got a couple here that we can look at. Kara, when you look at two winless teams, when they play each other, you want to think underdogs. Underdogs in week four with winless teams are covering about 66% of the time. So when you're talking Carolina, Minnesota, you're looking underdogs there. So look, Carolina. Also teams that are scoring a bunch versus teams that are not scoring a bunch. Los Angeles scoring a whole lot of points, especially at home for their last five at home have gone over the total. Um, Las Vegas, when they go on the road, they're not scoring points. Six of the last eight going under with Las Vegas. So mm -hmm. I like Los Angeles over Vegas as well. May not have Jimmy G, at least at the time we're taping the show, he's in the concussion protocol Which as well. Which certainly doesn't help their chances. Yeah. All right, Teddy, I know you've got a couple games circled as well. What do you, what do you have for us? Sure. Well, I mean, at this time of year, when we talk about finding value, what does that mean? Offenses that look pretty, well, defense wins championships. So the public's going to like teams that score and look pretty. And they're going to devalue teams that don't. So I'm going to take a couple of teams that if they're going to win or cover, they might look ugly this week. Let's talk about Dallas, minus seven against New England. And this is, look, strength of schedule. Dallas hasn't faced anyone. The two New York teams in Arizona, they have not faced a good team yet. New England last 10 road games, only two decided by more than a touchdown. New England three games so far this season, none of them decided by more than a touchdown. They're in every game. And Dak Prescott versus strong defense, well, we've seen enough that I've got my concerns. New England might be live in this one. And then you have a New Orleans team that lost last week, maybe without their starting quarterback this week. But let's not forget Tampa's plus five in turnover margin. That's number two in the NFL. I don't think that's sustainable. And of course, Tampa, short week versus a quality defense. New Orleans, pretty darn good defensively. They haven't allowed more than 20 points in any of their last 11 ball games. And over these last next couple of weeks, we're going to take advantage of all the new money that's in the market as well. Lots of new mm -hmm. gamblers, lots of guys that don't know exactly what they're doing that's going to create some value playing some of these spots that aren't easy to walk up to the window. And that's why those guys need to call you. Right? Ooh. Makes it a little easier. We've been doing this a while. We've made those same mistakes. We're just not doing it this year. <laughs> All right. Thanks, fellas. We're going to send these two to their corners because up next, they're about to argue about Patrick Mahomes. Can that New York defense slow him down? Plus, Mariah is talking to a big man with some big opinions. See her chat next. Before we had to break, Green Bay erased a 17-point deficit on Sunday to beat New Orleans and marked the eighth largest comeback in team history. But what is the largest comeback ever by a Green Bay team? The answer after the break. You're watching Beat the Odds, sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you what's the largest comeback in Green Bay history? The answer, 23. Green Bay has done it twice, erasing a 23-point deficit to beat Los Angeles in 1982 and most recently against Dallas in 2013. I am joined now by John Stinchcomb, former offensive tackle for New Orleans. John, before you were protecting Drew Brees, you spent your college career at Georgia, the program once again favored to win the whole thing this year. What's your evaluation of your alma mater as they start off 4-0? Yeah, back to back champions. They come in with high aspirations and rightfully so. You look at their roster top to bottom and it's the best in the country. Now with that said, Coach Smart has been often quoted as saying you're either elite and you're, or you're not. And this group isn't quite separating itself like it did in 22, but there's still justification for that number one ranking. There's just a number of teams that have closed that gap this year. Yeah, absolutely. Now, moving on to the pros, New Orleans now down a quarterback with Derek Carr suffering an AC joint sprain. Big game against Tampa Bay in week four. What's the outlook now on this team with the quarterback situation pretty uncertain? 
Yeah, it, this hurts for the New Orleans team. You look at it, and they haven't really been clicking consistently on offense, but Derek Carr is that X factor for them. You look at this past game, 17-point lead in the fourth quarter and find a way to lose. And now you get Alvin Kamara back. That's a boost for this offense, the team. But they're going to really be scrambling and relying on this defense going on this stretch of the season until they get Derek Carr back because they need to pair Alvin Kamara and Derek Carr to be really as successful as they want to be this season. Now, the first three weeks of this season going off of that have been interesting to say the least. What surprised you so far and how much weight do these opening weeks carry when evaluating teams season long success? Sure, there's a couple surprises. I think the biggest comes from South Beach. You look at Miami, the amount of points they've exploded, historic performance against Denver. Uh, you know, the new metric that everyone points to is explosive plays, and, and the amount of speed that Miami has is scary for a number of defenses across the league. Very impressive. The other surprise comes from Minnesota, a, a team that you'd expect more from, and the other metric that is the tried and true game gauge for how a team performs is turnovers and with nine turnovers so far in Miami or in Minnesota you can kind of see why they haven't had this early success I expect that to turn around but through three weeks in the season I think you get a good gauge for what a team is about and uh, uh, there's already some teams that understand uh, this is probably not our year and they know that you know you're looking up at how do we build for future seasons kind of scary to think we're not through the first quarter quarter of the season and it's that clear of a picture others are still trying to sort it out yeah it's really starting to shake out a little bit John thank you so much for joining us we appreciate your time enjoyed being on thanks for having me all right you two it's time to battle you ready let's do it over Patrick Mahomes passing yardage Teddy get us started Let's take Patrick Mahomes under his passing yard 276 and a half in that range look KC faced a pretty quick team last week in Chicago. They're not facing a quick team this week, and they're facing a really good defense from New York. New York's looking to shorten this game as much as possible. They do not have a dynamic offense. They have a dynamic defense. It's all about fewer possessions. Fewer possessions, fewer chance to get more passing yards. And KC's goal is not about margin. It's about survive and advance. Get the W, get out of town, and let the hype train continue on Taylor Swift and company. Bottom line, Mahomes under passing yards. Jack? Yeah, I mean, you started, you ended where you should be starting, actually. I mean, if you're not factoring in the TSI index, I don't know what you're doing because what, that. What, what's that? The TSI? Taylor Swift, yeah, Taylor Swift index. I mean, that's, oh, where, that's where you start handicapping this game oh, because geez. this is the type of matchup where things are bigger at play than what's going on in the field. Forget about the fact that Patrick Mahomes has averaged 300 yards a game over his career. Forget about the fact that there's so much at stake with him. If he does not play well and they do not win, you're talking about seats at concerts. Mm. You're talking about merch discounts. You're talking about backstage passes, right. things that are really, right. really important. So I would absolutely go over the total here. In his subconscious, he understands, got to get Kelsey involved, got to throw it down the field. All right, timeout, timeout. Time's up, you two. Take Time's advantage. Up. I'm going with the TSI index. Teddy covers index. <laughs> All right, as good as that was, we still have the best to come. These two have been red hot with their best bets. See who they like this week next. Before we take our final timeout, with 491 total yards allowed, Cleveland has the third fewest yards allowed out of any team in league history. What are the only two teams that have allowed fewer? The answer after the break. Welcome back. Before the break, we ask you which two teams have allowed fewer total yards through three weeks than this 2023 Cleveland team. The answer, Tampa Bay in 1999. They only allowed 430 total yards through three games in Detroit in 1970. They only gave up 431 yards through three games. And not to beat a dead horse, but literally Denver gave up 726 last week. All right, we are back in the football cave. Uh, before we get to your best bets, mm -hmm. quick uh, note about next week. Jack, amazingly, yeah. uh, the country of England is letting you back inside. They're letting me in, fingers crossed. I mean, we're going to have <laughs> bangers and mash, fish and chips, baked beans for breakfast, all wow. sorts of great things, along Oof. with insight and breakdown of the big games coming up over there the next couple weeks. Is the food good? It's better than people say, for sure. Okay. When you're 
me, you eat just about anything. Just throw it on the ground, I'll eat it. But yeah, we're gonna go through all that and much, much more. Big, big week coming up. All right, excellent. You guys have been scorching hot with your best bets. Let's keep it rolling, Teddy. Yeah, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> uh, but of course, Mariah, you just talked about Cleveland. I'm gonna talk about Cleveland. Cleveland over Baltimore this week is my best bet. There's a strength of schedule issue, big time. All right, Baltimore, they haven't exactly faced the toughest competition, Houston, Cincy, and Indy yet, not like Cincy is clicking. So I don't think Baltimore is ready to step up in class. It's tough to bounce back on the road off a brutal OT loss. It really is like the one that Baltimore suffered last week as favorites of more than a touchdown. And boy, those Cleveland defensive numbers legitimately elite. Historically, elite. they haven't even been up 10 first downs in a game yet. This was the single wow. biggest wise guy point spread move off the opening line for good reason. Cleveland taking all the sharp money. They're taking my money too. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because Lamar Jackson's been incredible as an underdog. So that's, that's must-see TV for sure. A winner coming out of that really has inside track on things. I, I, if you can't win them all unless you win the first three or four, we've been really good at this spot. Mm -hmm. We're going to go over the total in the Los Angeles Indy game. Uh, Los Angeles offensive line certainly banged up, mm -hmm. not, not being able to protect the passer, but they now have a week to deal with that. I expect Sean McVay more short passing, more shots down the field. Also, Indy's one of those contrarian teams you think would go under. Most of the time they go under over, excuse me, five of their last uh, or four of their last five games they've gone over the total and five of the last five have all gone over in the matchup, go over the total between Los Angeles and Indy. Uh, Teddy, over, under on how many times Jack almost gets in trouble in London? Almost gets in trouble or actually gets in trouble? Let, let's go almost three. Let's oh, say three. almost got to be three and a half. I'm on yeah. some lists, so I can't go to Switzerland. I mean, there's a couple places over there that it gets a little bit dicey. Okay. I don't speak the language. It's really difficult. But London, so you're I'm pretty... just offensive to everyone. I'm an equal opportunity offender, yes. Oh, okay. Well done. Well done. <laughs> on that note, you guys have a great weekend.